respond when they do. And um, we think that we know the answer because the textbooks tell us that. The textbooks all have that. The environment gives us stimuli that activate the pineal gland and it goes into hypothalamus and then there is a cascade of hormones that uh, lead to maturation of male and female monad. Now you can look everywhere that's the answer and that's in all textbook and also it's in your head. You, when, when people ask you when, why do fish form when they do, this is what you have in your head and in the textbook. The problem is all these fish that get very old, they spawn at, at 20 years, at 30 years, at 5 years. What have they done in the year before? Why have they not perceived <coughs> the stimuli like they did? And um, I explained that with my son. I don't dare to explain it to my, my daughter, but my son grew up in the Philippines. And uh, he looks very Filipino, but he's cute. He's, he was very cute. He still is, but <laughs> anyway. So he was eight, and he did not notice the beautiful Filipina around him. And at age nine, he didn't notice either. And you can guess the story, how the story goes. At 11, he didn't notice, but at 13, he did notice them. But they were beautiful Filipina all around him, all the time. The environment had not changed. Something changed inside of him that made him see what is around him. And that is what is here, missing. All these fish, they miss something that uh, when it's, it is there, enables them to see the environment that uh, activate the pineal gland, that activate the hypothalamus and so on. But the pineal gland or the environment stimuli are not the necessary condition. They are only the sufficient condition. The necessary condition that something happens within the fish that makes them susceptible to seeing the environment stimuli. So, this is a, a complicated representation of a very simple fact. You have a fish growing with them and nothing happens. And the cascade, the environmental cascade that is supposed to be the cause for the fish to spawn is not working. So I put it in grey. And all of a sudden, it starts working. So it cannot be the cause. It cannot be the cause of itself. This environmental cascade. Must something must, must open the fish to see in this environment and make the environmental cascade work. So something is perceived after that, that was not perceived before. Now, what could it be? The traditional view, view of fisheries, of uh, white fish form, that I'm sure most of you have in your head, and the textbook, is in A. The fish grow, and then they mature spawn, and then they stop growing, because the energy that went into growth goes into reproduction. And then they don't grow anymore. And depending on how much reproduction there is, they, they, they have different trajectory. But essentially, they grow fast because they don't reproduce, and when they reproduce, they stop growing. Actually, this is, I can, use lots of words, but uh, the, the thing is nonsense. 
because growth is not a process that occurs in length, but it's a process that involves mass, weight. And when you plot the growth in weight of a fish, the age at first maturity occurs, and the size at first maturity occurs before the inflection curve, the inflection point of the curve, WI. And the inflection point of the curve is where the growth is most rapid. That means they spawn and the growth accelerate. It is not reduced. When you look at length, it seems that the growth is reduced by spawning. In reality, growth accelerates after spawning. Growth accelerates after spawning. And this you can actually calculate yourself. It's very easy. You take a growth curve like this and you express it in weight. And you will find that most fish that are big from this size <coughs> on, the size at first maturity is before the inflection point of the curve. So the growth accelerates. Moreover, if if it were true that growth is limited by spawning, the female should be smaller because the female invests much more in reproduction than the males. For fish it's certainly true, far more. Yet they grow 80%, in 80% of the species of fish, the female get bigger. Just like that. The female get much bigger than the males in 80% of the fish species. So if reproduction had an effect on growth, the female should be smaller. But they aren't. They are bigger. So basically, what we have learned about reproduction in fish is wrong. It's completely wrong. And this, this, you can reproduce hundreds of growth curves like that. I don't know why it's me who is finding that out. It could have been found many years ago. But that's because the growth is represented as in length. But fish don't have length, they have mass. So, next. So we have to find what can possibly trigger in a fish the growth of uh, the spawning. And the only way I can imagine that spawning is triggered by uh, a fish, in a fish, is because the gill don't grow as fast as the volume. The gills are a surface. Gills function like the radiator of a car. The radiator of a car should cool the engine. So it is, it is opposed to air flow. The air comes in, it cools the, the water that comes from the engine, and the air goes out, it is hot. So if you have a bigger engine, and you have to make a bigger radiator, you can make the radiator higher, you can make it wider, but you cannot make it deeper. Because if you make it deeper, it wouldn't work, because you have hot hair on the other side of the radiator, so you cannot make it thicker. So you have only two dimensions for, for gills, for a radiator. For any exchange on a surface, you have only two dimensions. The volume has three dimensions. So a fish that is 50 centimeter, when it gets double that long, 100 centimeter, it gets eight times higher, eight times heavy, because two times two times two, eight. The surface doesn't grow as fast. So as a fish gets bigger, it gets less surface area. The volume of the gills, 
the surface area of the gill gets smaller. So the surface area of per volume gets, gets smaller as they get bigger. So in A, you see the, the surface area of the gill and the oxygen supply. And at some point, the oxygen supply has to be limited to the growth of the fish. That's W max. In B, you can see what happens if you increase the temperature. If you increase the temperature, the fish uh, will have to stay smaller because they, the metabolism of the fish increases, the oxygen demand increases, and the fish will meet the oxygen supply that match this demand at a smaller size. That explains why fish are smaller when the temperature is higher or when they are stressed. Now, that is B. Now, in C, you can see that the fish, if they spawn, if, if spawning elaborating gonads or, or, or ova actually does cost energy. And it has, this energy has to be supplied but in the form of oxygen, which is burnt with uh, amino acid, it's turned into ATP, and, and the result is that spawning occurs at level QM of a, a metabolic rate that is higher than the metabolic rate at which they stop. That means if routine metabolism goes up, the QM has to go up either also. Now, you see that there is a ratio between QM and Q maintenance. And it so happened, you can ask the question, is it the same ratio in D as in A? In other words, do they use the ratio itself to decide when to spawn? And they do. Uh, this A, is uh, uh, guppies, uh, gobies to tuna in uh, 84, in a paper in 84 that I did, where I discovered this pattern. Uh, and the slope is 1.32 or 1.35. This is, uh, in B, is a uh, 50 um, salmonid from the US that colleagues did. In, in uh, C are 50 fish from Turkey and surrounding waters. In uh, D are uh, about 100 fish, species of fish and population, and more population from China. And uh, in E, uh, Um We recover the same value of 1.35 approximately. That means when the metabolic rate of fish declines, because it does with size, right? When the consumption of oxygen per unit weight declines, when it reaches 1.35, this triggers spawning. That, what I suggest, is triggering spawning. Now, um, can you imagine such a trigger? Very easily. Well, if you, if you dive and you keep your breath, there is a, we have a sensor in the aorta that uh, detects the level of carbon dioxide in our blood and uh, it forces us to go back to the surface because we suffer from hypercapnia. Right? So it, it is very easy to imagine a sensor that would sense how often you are running out of breath when, when the fish running out of breath because this level of 1.35 is rich, that's time to spawn. It's time to listen to the environment and to, to, uh, to be. So basically you have the, this stuff, this uh, stuff that we see in the textbook is correct, but what is missing is a switch at the beginning. And the switch 
is that the fish must have a certain size, and this size is relative to the maximum size it can reach. When a certain fraction of its size relative to the size it can reach, and something is switched on, and then the animal is ready to see the environmental stimuli. Alone, this is only a sufficient condition. Necessary condition is, is that switch. It, it doesn't work without the switch. And so there is a text here. And my last line is this. This is a different text. Basically, if you don't agree that it is oxygen stretch that makes the fish form, that makes the fish listen to the spawning, you have to come up with something else. Because in any case, the textbook explanation about why fish spawn is not sufficient. It, it is not sufficient because it only talks about what animals do when they are ready to spawn. But what is not there is the thing that makes them ready. So either way, there is something missing. What I produce, what I pro propose is a mechanism to fill that gap. If it's not, if it's accepted, it's fine. The, the paper, incidentally, where I present that is accepted. But if it's if it's accepted, it's fine. If it's not accepted, you have a job. Find another thing that acts as a switch. Because without the switch, your story is incomplete. That's it. Thank you very much.